Good morning, Coffee with Carl number 23, and we have some pretty cool stuff to talk about today because, you know, it's ebb and flow, right? I mean, things get released, and then they don't, and then whatever. So sometimes we're going to have a little bit of a lean week like we did last week where there wasn't really much to talk about, but this week there has been some pretty cool stuff. So let's just jump right into it. Um, the first thing I want to tell you about is Big Idea Design actually came out with a fixed blade. Now, it's in the Kickstarter phase, and it got released yesterday. Now, don't forget, I mean, I, I film these on the weekends, and then they come out on Wednesday, so I'm going to be behind just a little bit. But either way, it's called the Lookout Fixed Blade. It looks like, um, holy crap. So uh, they already have $75,000 in backing, which is pretty amazing. And it comes in four different versions. Let me read you the description here. This knife is named after arguably the most recognizable mountain in the Chattanooga, Tennessee area. It's a clean, small EDC fixed blade knife designed in collaboration with our CNC machine shop manager, Mac Kelsey. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Standard version comes in M390 with grade 5 titanium scales. And it looks like uh, you, it's, it comes in Magna Cut, has a titanium clip. Um, and I, I mean, you know... There's okay, and there's some made in USA models, which are the Tiger Wood Magna Cut, the Ulta Magna Cut, and the Black G10 Magna Cut. I'm sure that the prices represent the uh, the differences here. I've been toying with the idea of carrying a fixed blade for a really, really long time. As a matter of fact, since I have it handy, let me show you what I, I tried carrying for a little bit. Now, this here is from the company SE, and this is, I believe, the SE3. And uh Okay, my mistake. It's actually the SE4. And I liked it because the, the other ones were, were very, very big. This is a this is chunky as all get out. There's no doubt about that. But it's not as chunky as the SE5, 6. I think it goes up to 9. And then there's the Hoongloss, which is amazing. But this was a great, a great backpacking blade, which I would use quite a bit. Now, I'm no bushcrafter, as you can tell. It's still in great shape. So the stuff that I would use this for was pretty light duty. But either way, I loved everything about it. When it came to everyday carry though, this is a lot. Even though it's one of their smaller models and it comes with this Kydex sheath and everything like that, that's a lot to carry around, even if you do carry it sideways. Now, of course, you know, if you have the the loadout to su support something like this, then it may not seem like a lot, but in my everyday life, it's just too much. So I had for a while considered looking at the, um, SE makes another one. I forgot what it's called. They have like these interesting names, a very skeletonized one that I was like, maybe that's when I'll get. There's a couple others that I had looked at because I love the idea of a fixed blade. It seems like there's always now. I mean, the 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 ability to flick out a folding knife is really kind of nice, especially as when you're fidgeting. I mean, oftentimes when I'm on the phone, you know, I kind of will play with my knife. And I like that ability, but let's face it, there's nothing as durable as a good fixed blade, right? I mean, this thing is just, you know a big thick slab of steel that you can pry with and it's a tool, right? I mean, there's almost nothing you can't do with it. I love that simplicity and the uh, everything about it. So I've wanted to try carrying a fixed blade for a while. That's my point. And this may be a great way to do it with this new big idea design knife. Ironheart came out with a new colorway in not their ultra heavy flannel, but their work shirt. So, you know, their ultra heavy flannels are like a shirt jacket. They're really, really nice. But they also do have some other shirts, which I think sometimes get overlooked because the ultra heavy is, is kind of the one that takes the, the forefront, right? Now, this is a nine ounce Selvedge American Czech work shirt, and it's in blue, right? So I thought, thought it was funny because it's they call it the American Czech, and... I guess I can see it. I mean, I don't really get it 100%. It comes in blue and it also comes in purple. They both look really great. And I like the fact that this is in their work shirt cut, which again is a little bit more generous than their Western shirt. You, you kind of miss out on a little bit of the, the, you know, the angled accents that you get with the Western cut. But when it comes to fit, I found that the work shirts are far better and just a lot easier to use. So the Ironheart stuff is one of the, this is the way I look at it, okay? If they come out with a colorway that I just can't live without, that I look at and I go, man, that's amazing. And truthfully, when they come out with something, oftentimes there's nobody else who does it. So it's like, you know, you could get that one. And if you don't jump on it, you're going to have to look secondhand for it because oftentimes it's not going to be available from any other company, right? So if you see one that you really, really, really like, jump on it, know your size and order it. And so I'm not one to tell you what you really like. This may be the thing that you've been waiting for. It might not. So all that to say, 
If you think this is the one for you, jump on it now. Check the sizing chart because they definitely fit small. I'm like an extra large, maybe an extra, extra large in Ironheart. Whereas in everything else, I'm like a solid large. So uh, just keep, in, keep that in mind. But either way, beautiful stuff, made very well, crazy expensive, but most people would say very worth it. Grant Stone released two boots in their Crimson Kudu. Now, Kudu is a cool leather because it's thick, it's also very flexible, and it's a wild animal, so it has a lot of variation to it. Now, as far as I understand, it's sort of like a, a cousin of the antelope, and it is naturally hunted for overpopulation, and, you know, so their hides are, are a byproduct of, you know, the meat and stuff like that. But Kudu is really cool. I actually only have only had one pair of boots in Kudu, and that was the Allen Edmonds Patton. And I liked it. I thought the Kudu was really interesting. And these two different boots that Grant Stone offered in these, this new leather are great options. The brass boot is one of my favorites. When it comes to a dressed-up mock toe, it doesn't get much better than that. Now, they also have their field boot, which is a little bit more rugged, much more... Uh, similar to the old, you know, L.L. Bean type of Eddie Bauer hunting boots of old. Grant Stone is a great value. And I, the only thing I've ever heard is when people have a really big problem with things being made in China or supporting China in any way, even the people of China. That's the only time I've ever heard somebody say something about Grant Stone that's been negative. Filson came out with a new line of dry tin cloth. Now, if you got this email, I want to know if you maybe had the same reaction that I did. And it wasn't a, a good one, necessarily. Filson has been slowly decreasing, in, in my opinion, in quality, in their overall brand image, um, and their focus, right? They, now, once upon a time, they outfitted frontiersmen, lumberjacks, people like that. Those kind of people are few and far between in modern society, right? But still... For a long time, people have said, well, this is becoming stuff for hipsters, right? And I got to tell you, I don't really know if I've ever met a hipster in real life. I, I don't know if they wear a name tag or not, but I have heard all of the, you know, the kind of generalizations, right? They're dudes with beards and a man bun and they do yoga and whatever. And the whole idea, I guess, is, is really more or less this, this feeling of superiority to everybody else because they're into interesting, different things. And sometimes they just try to be different to be different, right? Am I getting that right? Well, the guy that they had in their email uh, was, if, I, if you had me draw a picture of a hipster, this would probably be it. Beard, man bun, you know, with that really high cut thing that people do now, that undercut, I think they call it, which to me, now I'm kind of old school, looks really silly. Maybe maybe there's a tinge of jealousy in there because I simply can't grow hair that way. Um, but even when I had hair, I never never did that. I think it looks a little silly, but hey, to each their own. I just think that it's, I don't think it's going to age well. I think we're going to look back on that extreme undercut where it's as like as 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 close to the skin as I have it right here. And then that like wave over thing. Um, I, just, I think that we're going to look back and go, whoa, what, what were we thinking? Right. But either way, this was the guy that they had on the Filson email for this new line that they have. Now, irrespective of that person and that model, uh, the actual products look okay. Now, the one that I'm going to pick out here is the Dry Tin Cloth Cruiser, $245, which in the land of Filson is a bargain. And I'm not sure that any other uh, wool cruiser or uh, you know shelter cloth cruiser, whatever they have, I'm not sure that one has ever been less expensive than this. Now, it definitely is a thinner material, but the whole idea of this is that it's it's dry to the touch, and oftentimes waxed canvas can feel a little bit leathery, a little bit cold. It's not the nicest thing against your skin. So let's see a little bit more of the details of this. We're going to be discovering this together because I looked at it, but um, I wanted to do a deep dive here just in case I, I didn't get my full reaction, right? So here we go. Uh, made with... Puncture tear and abrasion resistant canvas, two layers of fabric over the shoulders, back, and outer sleeves. Now, the material is 10 and a half ounce, 100% cotton, dry finish tin cloth. It says it's imported, and uh, then there's some sizing stuff here. Um, but more or less, what you have is a 10 and a half ounce cotton version of their Mackinac, of their cruiser, right? And I say Mackinac cruiser because that was the first one. That's the one that I have. And and to be fair, it's a great jacket. It really is, especially since they've been around for over 100 years and get them on the secondhand market and they're a bargain. 
One of the things that I would really like to do this year is compare my old one from the 70s or 80s. It was my father's. And a brand new one in the same color and to see if there are any differences. And because a lot of people have said, you know, the wool is a lot lighter now. It's different. They don't use Pendleton anymore. They they use some Italian wool factory. Um, and all of that is kind of part of their overseas the continuing uh, uh, sourcing of stuff overseas, which can be OK. Like, you know, good stuff comes from all around the globe and it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, we think of China or India as supplying us with very inexpensive and often low quality goods. But let's not forget that it's as diverse and uh, interesting a country as anywhere. And there are people there who are making incredible stuff. So, you know, to say that everything they make is junk or everything they make is great is different, right? It's the same thing with USA. Just because it has made in the USA stamped on, it doesn't mean it's of good quality. So, you know, you can make some generalizations, but I just want to say that it's not necessarily a bad thing that Filson is supplying or, or getting their stuff from overseas. I think people have a hard time with it because historically they have been an American company. They've gotten their, their wool from Pendleton. They've done everything here in America. They make everything in America. And let's face the fact that when somebody gets laid off from one of these companies, they're people that you may know. They might be your family. Uh, and, and these have a much more direct effect on the way that you feel about, you know, or, or how it affects you, right? A layoff. Whereas if it happens in another country, you probably, you, it doesn't affect you at all. So, you know, we have to be cognizant of all those different things. That being said, I don't think the Filson's headed down the right path. I don't know how they're going to turn this ship around. But luckily, there are other brands who have certainly taken up where they've left off. I have to figure out the proper pronunciation of this brand. Is it Dehen? Is it Dehen? Is it Dehen? I don't know. And stop naming your company after things that I can't pronounce. Of course, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot to confuse me. Dehen, which is, I think, the way you would pronounce it. Dehen 1920 came out with two products. One is a vest and one is a jacket. One is basically just a sleeveless version of the other, right? And now they're calling it their cargo carrier jacket. And it looks really cool. I love the stuff that they've done here. This is oftentimes uh, one of those brands that I've bought things from and everything has been of extremely high quality. I think that these guys give almost any other company a run for their money when it comes to ultimate quality. Their deck jacket, their N1 deck jacket is supposed to be basically the best you can get. Uh, even better than brands like Ironheart, which are known for their quality. Is it better than a, like a company like Real McCoy's? I don't know. But either way, this looks really cool. It reminds me very much of the tanker style jacket, uh, two large pockets. Now, how this looks when it's on you, because you have to be careful with some of these things that are really, really military inspired, because it sometimes can look like you're wearing a costume. And I think that when we look at it online or you look at it on a model, you could say, well, you know, that looks really cool. I could envision myself wearing that. And then you put it on and it looks like you just went to a re reenactment of a battle or something, right? I've definitely done that. And I know a lot I know a lot of people who simply can't wear like an A2 bomber jacket because they go, all right, it looks like I'm either cosplaying as Indiana Jones or I'm doing like or I'm like some sort of history buff or something, right? So, you know, I get it. And I think this might fall into that category if you're not careful. Of course, anything can be worn with a certain degree of uh of confidence and you could pull it off. But still, this is this looks like a really interesting piece, and it just came out this week. So the details are it is eight and a quarter ounce combed cotton produced in Japan. Interesting because oftentimes they will get their they're famous for their wool products. Right. But it's neat that they're getting their stuff from Japan here. And I wonder what this combed cotton is. I would love to see it. Uh, it says uh, what else? Full back cuff safety, orange, straight satin lining in body and sleeves. Really cool stuff. And I think originally this was meant for. If you were under distress, you could turn that your jacket inside out and it was very easy to see you, right? And now it's just become a, a, a look most of the time for those of us who are civilians. And, but I think it looks really cool either way. Covered heavy-duty two-way brass zipper with guard, interior welt pocket and snap closure, front cargo pockets with a double entry. So that means that they have the top, so the top opening and then from the side, which is a great move. I mean... I'm so glad that they did that because I have certainly bought jackets where it has the top entry, which is great for storing things, but 
you're left with nothing to do with your hands. And I'm a guy who likes to put my hands in my pocket. I don't know what to tell you. Now, the jacket is $560. The vest, on the other hand, is $325. But the vest, I, I guess I misspoke a little bit because the vest almost looks like it's unlined. Let's get in here and take a look a little bit closer. Same uh, cloth and exterior. Looks like it is unlined. So, yes, it says there, this piece is unlined. How about that? If I read a little further, I wouldn't have to waste your time. But either way, we're here together. So, uh... If you like the look of this thing in an unlined vest, that's pretty cool. However, I will say, for an unlined piece of cotton, $325 is a lot of money. Now, the $500 something dollars is, is more, right? But you're getting more. You're getting sleeves. You're getting a lining. You're getting the knit uh, cuffs and, and everything. This, I, I could give you several different options of similar products, which might fit the same bill. So uh, I'm not sure that this is a winner. Next one is not necessarily a product yet. But Baker's Boots teased something this week that really made me go, huh? And I think they're making a sneaker. That's what I think they're doing. Uh, it just says sneak peek. It's, an, it's a very close-up look of what looks very much like a sneaker body, but albeit in a waxy, maybe rough-out leather. Uh, let's read the description here. Sneaker season is coming. So right off the bat, right? Charles F. Stead and Lafarc Tannery. So Lafarc is in Mexico CF Stead, I believe, is in Britain, and they they uh, specialize in CF Stead specializes in their um, suede's. So let's see what's going on here. Kicks coming through with a tan cup sole should arrive in about two to three weeks. Limited availability. Now they say sneakers in the beginning. Sneaker season is coming. They wouldn't put that if this was not a sneaker. But they have very kind of these images don't show a whole lot. Right. So you can you can make a couple of assumptions here that these are a waxy suede from CF Stead sneaker. Um, and then there's another one here in a smooth leather, which, again, is probably from Lafarc in uh, Mexico. Lafarc is also where I, I know Thursday Boots gets a lot of their leathers as well. So Baker's is doing a sneaker which is pretty cool. I'm glad that they are, because sneakers are are one of those things that if you're a if you're a guy who's into boots, it's hard to find good sneakers. Now, there are some out there. I mean, Viberg is the one that comes to mind first. Moonstar Leather. Uh, what's that? Champion Sportswear? Something Sportswear. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head right now. There's a few of them out there, uh, but they are few and far between. So let's see what Bakers is doing here. I'm, I'm going to keep you posted as, as, as I know more. NYX came out with a few new models in their Shackleton Leather, which is in several different shades. However, the one that's getting the most attention is the, like, green. And I, I can't remember. Let's take a look. Do they have uh, the names for these right here? The Shackleton Leather. So it says here that uh, the Shackleton Leather is a waterproof heritage leather with some similarities to Chrome Excel. It's quite supple and should break in very nicely. Very beautiful leather from Horween. So Horween is kind of known for their hot stuffed leathers, right? Chrome XL is one of those. It's stuffed with oils and waxes, which kind of displace as it's bent. And it will lighten. It's that They call that pull-up. And it's a great look. And I think it especially looks good in the darker colors. Now, I actually have some tan Chrome XL, and it darkens nicely, but it kind of reaches a point where you're going to get as much age out of it as it's going to give you. And then it just looks like really, really nice from there. So the Shackleton looks amazing. I think that the greener pastures color is especially nice. And, um... You know, being a sucker for green, it leans a little bit gray, a little bit darker. Uh, it's it's a winner. Something like this in the right makeup could be really, really nice. 1620 came out with their St. Patrick's Day collection. And more or less what it is is some of your old favorites in green. So they have their button down work shirt. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Their single knee utility pant, Nyko work, sheet, work t-shirt, double knee utility pant, uh, their hoodie, and um, looks like some shorts as well. And the cargo pants. Very cool. So more or less what you have is the green version of a lot of your old favorites. Now, I will tell you that I have lots of 1620 stuff. I found that the fit on it is is at first you put it on, you go, whoa, this is pretty slim. But if you don't have a big old gut, it actually is really nice because it stays where you want it. And when you're climbing around or, um, you know, in and out of stuff or layering over it, it really is very nice. Now, I mean, I like a good hoodie that has some room. This one's kind of somewhere in between, but it makes it very comfortable to move in. I like their their trimmer fit, though. I, I think that the 1620 stuff is very... Uh, in the wor world of workwear, I think that 1620 would be the company that, if I had to choose one to go with, it would be them. I love their shop pant. 
The thing that I like about the shop pant as compared to something like the True Work T2 is the True Work stuff, it always sounds like you're wearing uh, ski pants, right? You get that that sound all the time. You can't sneak up on somebody when you're wearing True Work pants. However, with the 1620 shop pants with that four-way stretch, it a lot of times it feels like I, just, I forgot and I wore my sweatpants to work or something like that. They're that comfortable. But I wanted to talk just a second about their button-down work shirt. So their button-down work shirt is really one of my favorites. I love a lot of the details that they've done with it. For example, the collar has internal buttons which keep it nice and straight. It's just put together nicely. Double layer of fabric here where you get a lot of wear and um, it, it's just a great piece. It's probably one of my favorite. And I only have one. Now, I would love to do another roundup of work shirts this year. For a long time, the Patagonia Farrier shirt was my go-to. I was like, this is the best work shirt I've ever worn. I really don't think it gets any better. But, it, it, you know, some time has passed since then. And fair enough, there, there probably are some great options, which I'm just completely ignoring. So I want to do another roundup of work shirts. And maybe I'll do something like that this summer. I'm going to leave you with one final one today, which I saw and added last minute because I thought it was so cool. And it's from Benzac Denim Developers. This is their BWJ01 Worker Jacket 14 ounce Ecru Paint Roller Selvage Jacket. <laughs> okay, can you remember all that? Good, I hope you can. The thing about this was, number one, it's the color. The color is, I mean, Ecru is a, is a cool shade, right? I mean, it's, it's off-white eggshell maybe maybe leaning a little bit gray I, I love it i just think it looks really cool and i think paint roller might have been the best uh description for this that i've ever seen but what i really like about it is it looks like it has enamel buttons with the benzac logo on them but this is like a, a very simple jacket which could be perfect for that time of year where it's like up here, April, May, going into the warmer weather where you want something that's a little bit lighter color, but it looks really, really good. And I wanted to make sure I put this on the list because it certainly looks like it may fit the bill for a lot of people. So I've got to tell you, this has been a tough week. There are, there are certain weeks where it feels like uh, there are 24 hours in the day and I have 30 hours of stuff to fit in. And this has been one of those weeks and it just seems like it's been hit after hit after hit. And I am uh, sort of, I'm running out of fuel. You know what I mean? So I need a day or two where I can just, you know, you know, go to work, have a low key day at home and not really. But it's just been it's been constant and it's been uh, it's been a trying week for sure. These happen every now and then. And I think that this is what I kind of want to leave you with. I'm very glad that I have had some adversity in my life where I know that I can handle stuff like this because. In the grand scheme of things, wow, you had a busy week, big deal. There are people who are dealing with far worse across the world. But when you've gone through things which suck, right, and you you just, whatever that suffering has been and whatever degree, it helps you because you know that you can handle anything, right? So it, it, this is kind of the way it works, I think, with, with a lot of like um, elite military outfits. You know, they put them through hell, and they know if they make it through that, then they're going to be able to make it through pretty much anything. And we all have our, our version of that. I think that's one of the big benefits of college and, you know, those big study cram sessions that people will do is, you know, you have the ability to stay up for a few days and study for this piece or, or get it done or whatever, write that paper. And you probably will never have to do that in work, but you know that you have the stuff to dig down and, and get it done. This week is not the worst week I've ever had, and it probably won't be the worst week I'll ever have but I do know that I can handle it, right? I'm a little tired, I'm a little cranky. I think I'm coming down with something again because you know it just it beats down your immune system, but it's okay. For a long time, I was driving two hours to New York to do an overnight shift, and then two hours back, and then trying to sleep during the day, which I never could. Those were very, very difficult months, in the middle of winter, nonetheless. And if I can make it through that, then this is no big deal. And I think that people who never really had to go through that kind of thing or any sort of suffering at all, they've always just had everything handed to them, are usually very surprised when something happens. So not that I want to put my kids through any sort of undue suffering or anything like that, but I want to let them make their own mistakes, trip, pick them up, dust them off, and show them what they did wrong, but let them have the experience of having done it. I just think that there's a lot of utility in that. So even when you've had a crappy week like I had, I know that greener pastures are around the corner and greener pastures looks like a great color from the Knicks uh, 
leather. So <laughs> what a way to wrap it up. I hope that you have the best week that you've ever had. Thank you for joining me again on another episode of Coffee with Carl, number 23. We got to do something. We can hit like a milestone here, 50 or 100 or something like that. I don't know. Um, and I do read your comments, and I, I will be having people here with me um, in my corner. I'll have to back up the camera a little bit maybe or just do it in a different setting. But I have a few people coming who will be joining me on this Coffee with Carl talk. I think this is where these discussions belong. So when Albert comes over again, this is the channel that that stuff's going to be on. Um, and I have some people lined up, so I think it'll be really cool. And I'm so glad that you've been here with me and, and honored that you spend your, your time with me listening, watching, whatever it is. Um, just to be a part of your day has been a great honor. So thank you very much for that. And I will catch you next time.